Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. First off, I just had to give a massive thank you to you all for all of your love towards the Galaxy palettes. It's still crazy to me that you guys are just so into the products that I make, and so just thank you so much for all of your continuous support. And something that I wanted to mention in that video and I never actually got a chance to and I've gotten a couple of questions is that yes, I am working on an absolutely insanely massive restock of all of the different palette products. So more travel palettes of both kinds, more palette towers of both kinds, um, maybe some galaxy palette towers, we'll see about that. But it is an absolutely massive launch that I have planned so it's something that I'm having to work on for a lot longer. But hopefully that will be up and ready in a couple of weeks and as always there will be various announcements and videos when that actually happens. And that massive planned restock is actually what brings me to this video. Because I'm going to be attempting to produce the largest quantity of products that I have ever done, there are a couple of things that I want to try and make to assist me in that endeavor. One of them is going to be a completely custom built piece and the other one is somewhat more of a glorified IKEA hack situation. The first project, which is the completely custom built piece of furniture, is to hopefully solve a problem that has been an ongoing issue for quite a few months now. Right now in my current setup, every time that I go to create a wave of travel palettes, palette towers, palette boxes, whatever it might be, I essentially lose all capacity of using my studio for anything else while I'm waiting for the paint and or resin to dry on the palette lids. And that's obviously a pretty big deal when I'm trying to constantly work on a bunch of different things at the same time and I'm essentially losing days of use of my studio space for other projects. So I'm really hoping that the piece of furniture that I've designed will solve this issue. The second project is a lot more simple. It's essentially just product stock storage. Because I'm producing way more products than I ever thought I would be in my entire life, right now my studio is just not equipped to handle that volume of stock efficiently, so hopefully we're going to be solving that problem this week as well. If you've ever watched a video of me pour painting palette lids, you've probably seen that I like to put the lid that I'm painting on top of a plastic cup on top of a cooling rack that's inside of a cookie sheet. I know it seems excessive, but it's by far the best way I've found to keep the lids flat while having any excess paint easily drip off and not make a crazy mess while also having most of the parts completely reusable. This is definitely a method that I want to stick with using, so this piece of furniture was built specifically with this setup in mind. I also have a couple of different cookie sheet sizes, so whatever I build, I want to make sure it fits either of them easily side by side. Essentially what I want to try making is a sort of drying rack cabinet that can fit easily under a desk. Something that can really maximize my possible production without taking up unnecessary space. Now furniture building is absolutely not my forte, so I was coming up with a pretty simplistic design that I felt like I could pull off while still having it do exactly what I needed it to. Because I wanted to also use this rack for resin work, I wanted to fully enclose the sides to cut down on as much possible dust particle transfer that I could. And also obviously put a door in so I can get the trays in and out. Welcome to my currently unfinished workshop, but I figured it was the perfect spot to actually build this thing since there's lots of room down here and I also don't have to freeze outside. So this is all of the materials that we're working with. They're all pre-cut. So here we have the MDF flat parts to actually build the height of the cabinet as well as the side pieces to hold the shelves up. Underneath here is thinner MDF for the actual shelf pieces, my drill, and then over here are the actual top and bottom parts that I spray painted white already just so everything was already like a uniform white color and then I can make adjustments, touch-ups, whatever might need to happen later. I've also got screws to put everything together, the hinge for the door that I want on this thing. There's also plexiglass somewhere down here, but I will get to that once we're at that enclosure sort of part. And then also casters for the bottom. So yeah, I guess it's time to actually start building this thing. 
Now basically all of this beginning stage stuff was just a whole lot of measuring and drilling and measuring and drilling. I spent most of the first day working on this. I just felt like I spent most of my time just measuring things out specifically and then drilling the holes for the screws. I decided to go with MDF because you can get it in like a pre-primed white which you know was going to save me a lot on getting this to like a more finished look but because it was MDF MDF, it can split really easily, so I really did need to worry about drilling all of those holes specifically and pretty much just making myself like an IKEA furniture kit to put together later. And thankfully I had a pretty concrete plan in mind and most of the measurements were pretty uniform between them so I could get those holes and measurements measured out pretty quickly once I had figured out exactly where everything needed to go. That being said, however, even with all of my precision and everything, there were a few areas that did still give me trouble and didn't exactly turn out great. I was pretty worried about the structural integrity of a few places, namely the side pieces that got screwed to the bottom plate, I think at that point. Uh, they split pretty badly even with my drilling and everything else. And that compounded with a few other things, I ultimately decided to almost completely start over. Now it was looking pretty good and for the most part it was strong. I ended up getting most of the shelf cleat brackets on. I got to this point and then I just decided to redo all of that. So the new first thing that I decided to do was pretty much recut all of the pieces, namely these thicker MDF pieces. Now originally I didn't cut any of these. Um, my uncle cut the thinner pieces and I got like the store to cut the larger ones. So I invested in this new fun tool known as the Dremel Saw Max, which was very fun. Now, I really technically didn't need to cut the top and bottom piece, but I realized it was just slightly too oversized. Like, I allowed for too much excess, I guess you could say. So, to maximize the space without wasting excessive amounts, I just decided since I had this lovely new tool to just saw off an inch here there on either end to really bring down the profile of this overall cabinet to something that was going to fit the things more specifically. Actually, the main reason that I decided to start over was because of the door orientation. Now, I don't think you can really tell too much on my super rough plan of what I really had in mind for the door other than there was just going to be one, but initially I had it planned that the door was going to be on the longer side, but then I ended up switching it to the shorter side to not have as much door, basically. Obviously that door has to open somewhere, so there being a shorter door it was going to be a lot easier to be able to swing that door and have the space for it. And at that point, I was already not really happy with how things were going with all of the split ends and stuff, which learned my lesson and that did not happen nearly as badly the second time around. I just used shorter screws the second time, which worked great. Um, but because things already weren't going well, I just decided to flip it back to having the door on the longer side, but split the door in half so that instead of there being one large door, there would be two smaller doors. So other than the various planks changing orientation and just me generally getting smarter about how to build this thing, overall the plan did remain the same. So you've got these three horizontal pieces of MDF to act as cleats to hold the actual shelves themselves up. They're of course on each side of this unit, although on the front side where the doors are going, it's actually turned sideways so that there is more room for me to be able to slide the cookie sheets in without having to worry about possibly bumping the upper part of that cleat. But yeah, I somehow got everything lined up and fitted well, and that is what it was looking like before I put the actual bottom piece on. I decided to start at the top just because I thought it would possibly look more in line. The cut on the bottom piece was a little wonky, uh, so I wanted to make sure that it was 
as in line as I possibly could get it with my Mickey Mouse cutting that I had done. And then of course it was onto the casters. Now they came with these absolutely massive screws so I had to go and get replacement ones that were shorter so that they didn't just completely go through the bottom MDF piece. But other than that the casters went on really easily. I pretty much just eyeballed them on. I really at this point I was like so over constantly measuring everything. I just eyeballed them to be inset from the corner a little which was honestly pretty easy. I just you know you didn't want them in line with the screws that were already holding the thing together so just in like half an inch or so on both sides so pretty easy to line up and I just screwed those directly onto the bottom. And finally, for the moment of truth, actually flipping this thing over to see if it fell apart and or if it would roll, which thankfully it was all good. Now that the mainframe is done, it was on to the shelves. I decided to take some of the extra pieces of the thinner MDF board and cut them down to create a gap piece for the main shelf pieces. Now this entire cabinet was obviously a pretty strange size, so I decided to save on some of this MDF board and instead of it being one large slat to actually have multiple, just a couple of slightly smaller slats that were spaced out a little to make up for, I think it ended up being like less than a six inch gap that I could have spaced out on either side, which really wasn't going to be a big deal because obviously the cookie sheet has edges and anyway, the point is because I had this new saw tool, I decided to actually create a piece to fill in that gap and then patch it together on the bottom with a couple of other extra pieces, which I think actually worked out better because it made the entire sheet a lot stronger so it wouldn't bend as much. And so I did that to custom fit each individual shelf, which, you know, it's not the prettiest to have that seam area down the middle, but once this is in use, you're really not going to see it. So it really does not bother me. I then decided to try and clean up some of the more rough areas with some white wood filler. Obviously because I had essentially taken this entirely apart and rebuilt it, there were some extra holes in some areas and just generally some not great looking zones, so it was easy enough to do a bit of patchwork. First off, excuse the banging, there's some work going on upstairs, but here is the current state of the drying rack cart or whatever I'm calling it. It's pretty much put together. I ended up wood gluing the shelves on to the cleats just so that they didn't slide back and forth when I go and put cookie trays on them. And I also white wood filled around the edge just so that it looked nice and clean. But now what I'm going to do, because there are some unfinished edges, at least on the front and other than just um, sanding off the excess wood filler that I put on in the different screw areas and stuff to try and clean up the top. Other than doing that, I think I'm going to first gesso this side of the board because MDF just soaks paint up like a sponge. So gesso will hopefully speed up that process of getting the few edges white. I'm not going to be super picky about it. Um, but because this is the front of the entire cart, I think, you know, spending a bit more time since this is the side that you're going to be seeing the most uh, will be worth it. I'm also going to try and magic eraser up some of the scuff marks that are on the MDF pieces and then see what those look like. Might do a little bit of white paint touch-ups here and there if it's a little rough. Uh, eventually I will probably put some of my vinyl on the top of this just to finish it off, but for right now I am just going to leave it white because it's going under a desk and I'm not entirely sure if I want the top to be like marble or wood or whatever. Um, so I'm going to leave that for now and I'm just going to just fix up basically this so that we can start looking at the plexiglass.
So I'm back up in my studio now. I dragged this up here. I just figured that it was going to be easier to pull this upstairs with the plexiglass it wasn't on yet and it's also just generally a cleaner environment up here to start putting the plexiglass on the sides of this thing. So right now it is under this desk. This is not where it's going to be staying. It can get pushed back more but I'm obviously going to be pulling it out to put the plexiglass on it. Uh, but this isn't where it's staying. This is like its temporary home. It will eventually be be downstairs in the workshop but I do need this piece of furniture right now to be able to do this crazy palette run so that's why it's already built and it's just going to live up here for now but obviously this is not like the most practical solution for it since this is like completely monopolizing the underneath area of this table but hey it does fit up here which is the good thing so this is going to work out well for now And here is the finished cabinet. I pretty much didn't film any of the assembly of the doors because it was just stressful enough without having to worry about camera angles, but they are magnetized to the bottom and top uh, plates. Um, there's just some Chicago screws on it, like most of the assembly on the doors are Chicago screws just because, you know, the plexiglass is really thin so it needed that like binding post sort of hardware to really assemble everything so the hinges are also attached with Chicago screws there and I just figured for some magnetic um, ability instead of worrying about if the glue would you know eventually rip off of the plexiglass um, if there was a magnet on there just Chicago screwing that and having the magnet magnetized to the one side of the screw would work great. And for the magnets they are just recessed disc magnets just cut and drilled a little hole to put those in so that it didn't stick out unnecessarily. And then of course we've got the metal handles and yeah this is really functional. I mean it's a little sketchy in a few areas uh, but for my pretty much first and only piece of legitimate furniture that I've custom built I don't think it's half bad. It definitely is doing exactly what I need it to do um, and it doesn't look half bad. It's decently, it's seemingly completely structurally sound uh, so I would say that that is a win in this department. I do need to like dust off the inside and like really clean it up before I start using it. Um, but yeah, that is what the finished cabinet looks like. Now on to the second order of business. Obviously my studio right now is in crazy shambles because of building that. But the second thing of course is worrying about product supply storage, which as you can see right now, closet is in extra shambles thanks to all of the products that I've been printing off. My printers have been going nonstop. They're not going right now, which is honestly like the first time I think all week that they haven't been running. Um, but yes, you can see the 
product uh, stock levels are increasing greatly and this is probably not even a third of what I need for the different things so it's just completely just monopolizing this printer area. Normally for supply right now I have a bit of space down there which was fine until I had started having to make a crazy amount and then the uh, travel pallets tend to live in here which is working right now and that might be able to stay like that but when I started making all of the pallet towers and stuff, obviously I have all of these layers now and the lids. These are unpainted, un, um, taken apart lids. Everything still has their like support material because I've just been literally ripping them off of the print bed and sticking them here and continuing to print more. Um, and you know, it's taking up a lot of space. So I figured as a solution for that because, you know, for the most part, this stuff is pretty thin. And what I ended up doing is, you know, every two layers you get a lid on it. That's like the starter kit. And I don't normally like stacking the pallets too much, like the lids on top of each other. So because everything for the most part is pretty skinny stuff, I decided to buy a couple of shoe racks. These are the ones that I picked out because they looked really strong and they are stackable so I got two of those so that I will have six shelves and I'm gonna try and mod those a little bit and put some wheels on it just for ease. So gonna see how that works out. I bought ones that just have a screw so I might end up 3D printing a piece to kind of stick up into the bottom piece here but need to see what these are like. So just going to start building these shoe racks. And here's where this storage rack is going right now. Sorry, I'm on the floor because this is going to be a way better angle to show you this. So as you can see, it is pretty full already and it's done wonders for the cleanliness in my studio. So this was a great addition. On the bottom here, we have some unpainted tins that I also haven't grabbed the lids for any reason. These are the lids that um, and the bottoms right now that I have taped up and pre-primed. This is just an empty box. I really like recycling the bottom parts of filament boxes and also the boxes that the travel tins come in. They're nice and thin and they fit a lot of different places while also holding the product very well. So that is what most of these are. These are bottom pieces right now. These are also <laughs> bottom pieces and then 
up here. I just have a box of lids that I need to start taping up and priming and all of that to start pour painting. This is just my uh, weight box, like my decoy box for figuring out package weights. This is some random leftover stock of like products that aren't really any of these, so that's just there for now. And then up here, that's a whole lot of figures I haven't had time to deal with. And on the top shelf here, I have my scale, which this has been living on my desk for months, so I'm very happy to have a good spot for this that is also easily accessible for when I need to use it. And then I have this drawer unit that I painted a few weeks ago. Um, it was, I think this one was green and I sprayed it white like I did to one of the other ones. Uh, and that's going to be used for more store stock things. So yeah, most of this right now is uh, store stock stuff, product stock, uh, but it is working very well to hold a bunch of other random stuff that has just been sort of taking over my studio to make my life easier and cleaner in here. But since this is all now filled up and organized and everything is built, that's actually going to be where I end this studio vlog. So thank you so much for joining me on this furniture building journey and I will see you in my next video.